Hey guys, this is another episode of looking back at um, some WrestleManias. Um, so this time we have WrestleMania 22. Uh, this took place in uh, 2006. Uh, so this was like kind of like the last like uh, WrestleMania that kind of took place in an arena, because everything afterwards would be in like these big stadium. And, um, so this was the last time, which was kind of like in a small venue. It, was, it took place in Chicago. I forgot the. The, the actual uh, name of the arena, but it was it was in Chicago, and when you watch it, you can feel that it felt really small compared to the WrestleManias that would come afterwards. So it's 2006. What's going on in the wrestling business? We're five years removed from WCW um, closing up shop. Uh, we have TNA. Basically, WWE doesn't have any competition. Uh, there, there's TNA, but. Um, they're, they're still starting up. Uh, they signed in the deal with, uh, Spike TV in like 2005. Uh, Sting has joined them. So they started their relationship with Sting. Uh, Ring of Honor is still out there too. Um, a lot of the guys in Ring of Honor will eventually, uh, go to WWE. Uh, so this is like 2006-ish. So I don't, I think, uh, like eventually, you know, like guys like CM Punk. Uh, will be uh, finding their way to uh, WWE. Uh, anything else in the wrestling business? Uh, that they, those were like the two major companies outside WWE: Ring of Honor and and TNA. Uh, of course, TNA had you know the the Spike deal, which was put them a little bit ahead of uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, so look at the cover here. Can we see like anybody that's still an active wrestler? Um, I want to see like Randy Orton and Rey Mysterio, and then the bottom there we got an Edge uh, with Lita. But it's a nice cover, you know. Here and we go in the back. You can see some of the matches, and we open it up just like in the WrestleMania uh, 21 uh, DVD. Uh, they featured the I guess the champions. So we got John Cena, the WWE Champion, and Rey Mysterio, the World Heavyweight Champion. So I guess you could say, like, some. I guess they kind of, like, gave away the, the match results with these pictures, but whatever. So you open it up again, and it's three discs set. And then in here you get... First thing you get, this is old school, the... Uh, the, I guess the entrance music uh, CD this came out and then there's nothing in the back and then you have these this thing right here opens up to the back gives you like the matches all right so let's talk about some of the matches you know what was going on in WWE at the time all right so one of the matches, uh, so we got Big Show and Kane versus Carlito and Chris Masters for the uh, the World Tag Team Championships. I think that's I think that was the title of the tag titles that was on Raw. Um, I just remember Big Show and Kane being being a team, uh, a brief team. Uh, I mean, again, like WWE, you know, we we all know WWE is not really big with tag teams, so sometimes they would just put together like. Um, guys single guys and make a tag team out of them and that's kind of, and that's kind of for like big show and kane and also carlito and chris masters they're not really like a solid team like when i think of tag teams i think of like legion of doom the nasty boys steiner brothers uh, you know wrestlers that were like you know that were pushed as a team you know uh then we have the money in the bank ladder match uh interesting um wrestlers in this we got rick flair rob van dam uh shelton benjamin matt hardy finley and bobby lashley so obviously this is the one i think that rbd won and then he would go on to cash it in on at uh ecw one night stand we also have um u.s title championship chris benoit versus jbl uh, so this is Chris Benoit. So like, I mean, Chris Benoit had their, his big, you know, moment at WrestleMania, WrestleMania 20. So this is two years later. So I guess they, they, they didn't feel confident in him keeping him in that, uh, in the main event. Uh, so, I mean, he was kind of like dropped down to like, you know, challenging for the U S title. Still, again, it was for a title, but 
I, I think they kind of lost it. You know, they I don't think they saw him as a um, a draw. We had a hardcore match, uh, Mick Foley versus Edge. Uh, and this is kind of the beginning of Edge's, like, you know, uh, push, you know, being the rated R superstar and all that. Uh, he was, you know, interesting career uh, for Edge, and now we see him going for the the, the uh, WWE Championship, oh, the Universal t title at WrestleMania against uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, you know, back then, you know, Mick Foley was just used to, like, you know, um, help, you know, get the, you know, like, younger, younger guys over, even though, you know, I wouldn't say, like, Edge, you know, was a young guy, but I'm like, I guess, you, you know, try to push people that were going to be, you know, wrestling for a long time. You know, he did that, you know, with uh, Randy Orton a couple years prior. So now he's working with Edge. Uh, we have the Boogeyman versus Booker T. Um, I think that was kind of like a throwaway match. I don't think it lasted that long. And I think this was kind of like the ending of Booker T. Uh, I kind of remember. Because he, te he went... I Actually, I know. He, it was 2006. I think Booker T was there in 2007. I think it was like around 2008 when he left. And he went to TNA for a couple of months. But... Yeah, it was towards the end. And I think this was before he did the King Booker um, gimmick. Boogeyman, I think they had like, you know, they built him up a lot, but then he didn't really last that long. I think it was like kind of like one-dimensional and stuff, so he wasn't really like uh, something they a character they can build. Probably one of the best women's match uh, that they did at that time was uh, for the women's championship, uh, Trish Stratus versus Mickey James. Uh, definitely look, go back and look at the, that match and just maybe look at that feud. Because uh, the way I think, if I recall, it was kind of like Mickey James being like obsessed with Trish Stratus, and it kind of was like a friendship, then became kind of like uh, obsess uh, uh, obsessive. And uh, w w what's the interesting thing? I think the crowd started to cheer uh, Mickey James during the match, which was interesting because Mickey James was the heel, but the crowd was um, was cheering for her. Uh, then we got the a casket match: Undertaker versus Mark Henry. When that match was announced, I was kind of disappointed because I was hoping that The Undertaker would have a, more of a, a better opponent at WrestleMania. I was hoping because, like, in 2005, at the end of 2005, Armageddon, he defeats uh, Randy Orton in the, um, the Hell in a Cell match. And then he takes, like, a long break, and uh, he comes at the end of Royal Rumble. I think uh, uh, Kurt Angle... Defended the world champ world heavyweight title against I think Mark Henry, and at the end of the end of the match he comes out and he does his thing and that kind of sets up a match with him and Kurt Angle. And I actually thought they would kind of like maybe like save that for WrestleMania because I, I think that would be a really good match. But they had it at um they had a match at SmackDown that I think had a no contest, and then they went on to uh to No Way Out the uh, pay per view before WrestleMania. Um, so kind of like, I mean, I kind of understand, you know, again, Undertaker trying to like, just like he did in WrestleMania 21 with Randy Orton, you know, he's trying to like, you know, uh, elevate Mark Henry, um, at the time. So it was a casket match. Uh, then we have Shawn Michaels versus Mr. McMahon in a no holds barred match. Uh, this is like, you know, part of their, their feud. Um, later on, and then I think, in the, I don't know if it's the next pay-per-view or the one after, they did a whole gimmick where it's Mr. McMahon and and, his, and Shane against uh, Sean and God, that storyline. So, uh, <laughs> and then this is kind of like, you know, uh, and then DX eventually gets back together during the, the summer and they feed with the McMahons. Um, and then we got uh, Kurt Angle. It's a triple threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Kurt Angle versus Rey Mysterio versus Randy Orton. So, uh, Rey Mysterio won the Royal Rumble. Now here's the thing. Uh, I'm never. I'm not a big Rey Mysterio fan, and I really don't think he deserved the the win because I just think that that you know they because you know, the only reason he got got the push is because Eddie Guerrero died. That's what I I you know that's like the thing. That's what I think. I mean, I don't think if, if Eddie Guerrero never passed away, would would Rey Mysterio still get that uh, that push? I mean, I think the the original plan was probably going to be just Kurt Angle versus Ray, Randy Orton. I think that was the, the original, and then he kind of threw in Rey Mysterio. Um, yeah, so I mean, I I don't too, I was never a fan of that. I mean, if you're going to push some anybody, 
after you know Eddie Guerrero died. I mean, I would probably do Chavo Guerrero instead, but uh, I don't know. And I always thought that he was going to be a short-term champion, which he was. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I feel like every time you push Rey Mysterio, he gets like an injury or something, a knee injury or something, and he's off TV. Of course, Rey Mysterio won. You know. Uh, I know one thing. I don't really like triple threat matches. Uh, they're they're kind of annoying this to watch because you're always gonna have the one guy that's outside the ring while the two other guys are wrestling each other in the ring or something back and forth. So it's it, it, triple threat matches are, are are not good. But you know WWE does a lot of them. You know, especially at WrestleMania, they try to group everybody together. Uh, then we have a Playboy pillow fight: Tori Wilson versus Candice Michelle. They come a long way with the women division. <laughs> uh, and then the uh, the main event, WWE Championship match, John Cena versus Triple H. Uh, again, you know, John Cena, you know, defending the title. And actually, the, he was, you know, usually, you know, WrestleMania, the champion usually loses the title, you know. And, uh, you know, he retains. So they were still, you know, we were still building up John Cena. This is like, you know, the John Cena era in uh, WWE. Um uh, and uh, I was kind of like surprised that Triple H lost because I thought you know he would would have won the match. Uh, I feel like you know back in the, this this days in WWE, like Triple H was always you know in, in the main event or in a major storyline. Uh, so it wasn't like a big surprise that it was going to be Cena and uh, Triple H at uh, WrestleMania. Uh, you know afterwards, you know after you know post WrestleMania. Uh, Triple H would have the babyface turn and join Shawn Michaels. They would reform Degeneration X for that summer, the summer of 2006, and feud with the McMahons. Uh, John Cena would go on to pretty much have a big feud with uh, Edge. Uh, so basically, like he would, um, he would drop the title to uh, RVD at One Night Stand, ECW One Night Stand. And then, uh, but he would have a feud, he would feud with, like, Edge later, and they had, like, I think a big, like, um, big match in Unforgiven that year in September. Uh, but here we go, um, that, that was WrestleMania 22, uh, it's, it's good to look back at these, like, these old WrestleManias to see, you know, what wrestling was like back then. Hmm.